Good morning. It's 10, 11 a.m. on March 17, 2021. Uh, this is going to be a slightly different uh, report. Uh, this is one that is not part of a report that I directly filed concerning the subject matter itself. But insofar as my reporting efforts started initially with efforts to report social security fraud and fraud involving the Health and Human Services and Housing and Urban Development Agency in Chicago, Illinois. And that part of what compelled me to attempt to do what I did was based upon my former employee at the Department of Public Health for the city and county of San Francisco. It's only appropriate, I believe, now that I have the information I do that I follow up in accordance with what I understand to be the matters at hand. There's a few things I want to point out, just as context. I recently found this picture in uh, Barbara Bush's biography. In about a month, we'll come to that. But for the time being, there was this picture of George, George W. and Jeb on a boat. And I was concerned because George and George both had on Texas Tech gear. And then there's Jeb with the Chicago Cubs jacket. I couldn't understand exactly what it was. But now, today, what is drawing my attention is a picture that is not so dissimilar from another picture I saw. Has anybody ever read Dick Cheney's biography? I haven't been able to read it all. But in that biography, there's a picture of him. He's in a wheelchair. And he's in the Oval Office, if I'm correct. And he's there with Barack Obama and Joseph Biden. The two of them are standing, but Dick Cheney's in a wheelchair. Apparently there had been some injury in his last days in office. So when he vacated the office of the vice president, he was, he was in a wheelchair. Well, look at this. Getting a free ride from my aide, Peggy Swift, in the Oval Office. A picture of Barbara in a wheelchair in the Oval Office. George looking dashing with a portfolio of papers as if he's on his way somewhere. And yet it's almost as if Barbara is being pushed about, almost as if she's in a carriage. They're on their way somewhere important. Now Barbara did receive an ankle injury at Camp David shortly before and during the buildup to the invasion of Iraq. Were these acts of social security fraud? For the last several years, the information that has been publicly available concerning the end of the life of Senator Edward Kennedy was that on St. Patrick's Day of 2008, he experienced some form of incapacitation. Initially, it was understood he had had a stroke, that he needed some time to undergo convalescence. It was during this time frame, however, my understanding is that he was attempting to promote his legislation concerning health care reform. Now, I've read a couple of sources on the history of the Affordable Care Act, how it got started, some of the legislative debate that occurred, some of the strategic changes that happened, including change of leadership in terms of who was occupying the office of the presidency at that time. And I've also tried to evaluate it in the context of attempting to understand its relationship with an earlier universal health care proposal that was ongoing when I was a teenager. That did not get passed. It certainly did not get passed under the rubric of being legislation supported by the then First Lady of the United States. But by the time the Affordable Care Act, as we now know it, was on the agenda in some manners, there was an election season that was ongoing. And I have to be honest with you, as much as health care was a very urgent issue and has been for a long time, I do not recall Senator Kennedy's health care reform package being a central issue 
at least locally, in Chicago, Illinois during that time frame. There were other issues that were the primary issues that were being discussed. And among the issues that were the primary issues being discussed was a controversy involving somebody, actually a number of somebodies, that were presidential candidates at the time having to do with housing. And one accusation concerning a matter related to housing at that time concerning one candidate was bringing up recollections and comparisons with concerns regarding housing involving another presidential candidate. These were issues that were reported on in the media. These were certainly issues that people that had an interest in the campaign season were apprised of and aware of. After the Democratic Convention happened, however, at the end of the summer, there was a change in priorities in terms of the presentation of publicly accessible information. Now, since this time frame, there's been information that has been put into the public realm that doesn't always comport with what I remember the information in the public realm at the time to say. Last summer, there was a situation where an information that had not been available online for years suddenly became available. Is this connected to an effort that was made uh, by the President of the United States at the time that I understand was supported by certain members of Congress in the Senate who are primarily identified along their party affiliation as opposed to the manners in which I believe would be a more considerate and appropriate uh, context i.e. committee assignment, or perhaps uh, personal expertise they may have on policy issues, including ones connected to legislation either pending or passed. But nonetheless, that there had been a kind of declassification of certain information that was allegedly compiled in the course of consideration of allegations of interference by a foreign nation during the 2016 presidential election. Be mindful, as I am, the presidential election is also an election for every single member of the House of Representatives and at least one-third of the Senate. So, at that time, information became publicly accessible pertaining to what I recall about the 2008 presidential election season that also had to do with housing issues. Specifically, that one of the candidates at the time had recently acquired a house, but that it had been acquired in a manner and in consideration of relationship with people who were currently being investigated for crimes associated with their real estate dealings. Now, these crimes and these accusations have quite a history in Chicago, these kinds of processes. As a matter of fact, I learned something about them myself in my own professional capacity during the mid to late 1990s, early 2000s. Followed up on it in certain manners when I then had another professional experience working for a real estate law firm. And these things have persisted, but for much of the time frame following accusations of alleged foreign interference in the presidential election up until the end of the summer of last year, which, by the way, came during the course of this global health pandemic and the response, that information was not available online. Now, it is after or around this time that I revisited information that I found in 2018 that discussed the circumstances around the death of Senator Edward Kennedy. And specifically was that said word, Senator Edward Kennedy had uh, experienced a stroke on St. Patrick's Day, or rather March 17th of 2008. Now the initial reports I remember identified that he was in connection with an effort to board an aircraft in order to be transported. 
In 2008, certain things were underway that by 2010, I saw directly and experienced directly. I witnessed the use of directed energy weapons targeting the neuroprocesses of somebody who was a senior at the time in a manner that resulted in degenerative brain damage that eventually, within one year, led to his death. This was after working for a congressional candidate whose brother had had <clears throat> a stroke the year before the election, who had also suffered some sort of neurological degeneration and was in some form of rehabilitation during the election season. I contend, based on not just circumstantial evidence, but also my personal experiences, what I've witnessed, and the response to my efforts to seek redress in consideration of the implications of what I experienced and witnessed, that there is a high likelihood that Senator Edward Kennedy was murdered. I am concerned that there are other members of Congress that know about this, and that part of what was happening was a very, very high-level house flip. They wanted the Kennedy House. And within two years, the house had already been rebranded, and to this day, despite having a specific change of helm, that house is still so named. I contend it was murder. Now, do I have the actual medical reports? No, I don't. Do I have the actual murder weapon? Well, I think at this point that involves a more comprehensive consideration, and it's the sort of thing that somebody is going to have to get a little more conscientious in regards to. I'm not in a wheelchair. And I'm glad to know that at least for some time, Barbara healed and was able to walk just fine. I'm glad to know that Dick Cheney was able to heal and was able to walk just fine. 